Dang it. We're going to take a little time now and talk about how you time the camshafts on a Jaguar V12 engine. I'm putting the, the second engine for the Texas XJS together, and this is just a really good time to do that. Now, let's identify a few parts first of all. This is the harmonic dampener. It's got the timing marks on it, and these timing marks correspond to these on the scale, which is bolted to the bottom of the oil pan in this orientation right here. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate the crankshaft until we get this, get zero lined up on the index on the dampener. The camshafts are up here. These are the timing sprockets on the, on the uh, camshafts. This is B bank, that's A bank. We're going to be dealing with this one first. We have to get the camshafts lined up correctly relative to the timing marks that we just set. Now what I do when I set those timing marks on the harmonic dampener to zero, what I do is I then bolt my little tool back here on the back of the flex plate. It's just a piece of aluminum that has the opposite tooth pattern as the flex plate. When I get the piston to top dead center or the index mark to zero, I then bolt this in place. And just to give you a little insight as to how I made sure that A1 was at zero degrees, when I did the valve seals, I just got A1 to top of its travel or close to it and use a valve on the top of the piston it, as a push rod to get the a dial indicator or drive a dial indicator so I could just simply turn the crankshaft and get the piston on uh, 1A to top dead center. I then installed this tool on the back. So we got the, the uh, two camshaft sprockets. We've got this jack shaft sprocket right here. That has a timing mark on it which we're going to make believe that white mark right there is it. That needs to be directly down. Now to time the camshafts, we're going to need this little tool right here. This is available from a number of sources. What you do with this is you slide it over here. You can see this little notch right here on the camshaft. That little tab right there has to fit in that notch. When these surfaces here are laying flat against the gasket flange for the cam cover. So that is timed the way it ought to be right there. Actually, that could be turned just a little bit so that we don't have a gap, this gap right here. So I'll deal with that later. For what we're doing right now, this is fine. So we've got both camshafts set up. We've got the crankshaft at zero degrees, and we've got our jack shaft where it needs to be. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure that the timing chain is tensioned properly. Now, the camshaft sprocket comes apart like this. You can see that there are splines around the outside of this hub, and there are splines around the inside of the sprocket itself. These correspond with each other. What that enables you to do is every couple of degrees or so, you can position this hub relative to the sprocket itself. Now that's important in terms of being able to tension the chain. You can see right here we've got the chain is kind of loose. What we can do is we can, if we separate the sprockets, we can tighten that up without having the, having the, the internal hub engaged. You can rotate it without the hub. It fits on the camshaft like this on this shoulder right here. So you can move this relative to the camshaft. Once you get the chain tight, you can now take the hub and insert it. And you can see that it's not lined up, with the holes are not lined up. You just simply move it until they are. Went too far, but you get the idea. Once you get the chain tensioned properly, and this internal hub in a position where you can actually fit a bolt in. I just go ahead and just put one in 
to hold it in position. Okay, and then what you do is you recheck the chain to make sure that it's tensioned properly, which that is. If it's loose, you don't just simply take the camshaft and rotate it until it's, until it's tight. It's timed already. You got to pull the hub, move it again, and then find a new spline, and then do it over. Okay, so you've done this. What we need to do now is we have to have the chain tight in between here and the jack shaft sprocket. And there it is, right there. And now we got to do the same thing up here. Now, during this entire operation, we've had to have the tensioner latched. What that means is that it's pulled up and there's a latching mechanism that you just flip over. And when you got it tension properly, it sort of snaps into place. Okay, and if you go to the owner's man or the shop manual for the Jaguar XJS V12, you can see how that works. So you do the same thing here, making sure that your ten chain tension is right all the way up here. And then you put a bolt in there. And then you just recheck everything and make sure that nothing has changed. All your timing marks are good. And then you can go back and then you can install all four bolts in the hubs and then you can unlatch the tensioner and that then will spring out it'll take the curve necessary to tension the chain properly it's not a particularly difficult operation it's just that uh, it's got to be done right because you don't if you don't have this the chain tight on this side the engine is rotating clockwise as viewed from the front if this is loose you can have these cams in the right position and the chain tensioned or the tensioner unlatched, but as soon as you turn the engine over, the crankshaft sprocket pulls the tension out of this chain and, or the slack out of this chain and it then, uh, you know, starts pulling on the camshafts too late. Your camshafts are retarded and you might not notice it, but the engine is not gonna run as well as it should. So it's, it's important that this be done properly. So there you go. Now, one thing that I failed to mention that I think is pretty important is that when you're working with an engine like this, I didn't take the heads off, but I had to take the front cover and the oil pan off, and you're working with these bolts up here on the hub of the camshaft, and you happen to drop one, well, it just kind of falls down through the cylinder head and drops onto the, the uh, drip pan down below there, and, you know, you bend over and you pick it up. Imagine what happens with the same thing if you got the front cover on and the oil pan on and you drop that bolt. Well, there's a really good possibility that bolt's gonna go all the way through the front cover and down to the oil pan. And then you gotta spend the next several hours of your life with a magnetic pickup trying to get down there and pick it up and you will not be successful. Okay, now you've got the next week of your life planned. So what I do when I've got all this sorted out what I do is I take paper towels and I just kind of stuff it down here, particularly on the low side like that, so that if I do drop a bolt, it falls onto the paper toweling and not a big deal. You pick it up and give it another try. So there you go. Like I said, not hard, just got to do it right.